Therefore, you have something to comment before I come back to Ms. Ndium, briefly. Yes, I, I just I just have a, a quick question for uh, our last speaker. I, I want to ask him, since um, he, he seems more um, inclined to working with the government of Cameroon and, and very close to the government of Cameroon, I, I want to ask him these uh, few questions or you know, um, just just get requests from him. Why hasn't, why has things been so difficult, uh, especially a crisis, a conflict like this, a bloody, bloody conflict like this? Why hasn't it um, been discussed in, within within the, the, the parliament of Cameroon? Why, why has it been so difficult? And, and secondly, why, while he spoke, there are certain things that really came to, to my attention. Um, as, as close as he is to the government, I think he should be doing everything possible to make sure that um, he, uh, he becomes that, that liaison, right? Between his people who are suffering trying to make the government understand what and being very honest about it and not trying to um, uh, benefit from or pick up something, you know, beneficial from it. I think we all are hurting. I think this has affected ev almost every single uh, family um, um, in, 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 in the English speaking Cameroons. And I believe, I, I definitely believe that we all want a solution to this problem, right? But why hasn't this been decoded in, in the halls of the parliament in Cameroon? Is it that our Francophone brothers do not want to talk about this? Is it that truly we are just two cubes of sugar that our francophone brothers thought they could just easily dissolve? Is it that, what is it that is so difficult? Because when, 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 when English speaking Cameroon rose up and said, we've had enough, right? This marginalization, this, these, these, we, we cannot continue like this. Why? Because I know deep in my heart that um, um, as, as an English speaking Cameroonian, it doesn't matter whether you're federalist or unionist or a separatist or uh, in my vocabulary, there's nothing like separatist. Um, I'm still looking for the vocabulary for it. Um, but every single aspect of these these uh, uh, groups of people have been targeted, either by the military or by the known, you know, state actors. I'll call it that. How do we find a middle ground? How do we navigate this? And this question is to the, the previous panelist. Please, I want you to tell me why this problem has not been discussed. How do you resolve a problem that you don't even accept? I believe the government of Cameroon doesn't even accept, has not been able to accept that there is a problem, let alone begin to solve it. Where do we start? Please answer me. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, madam. The problem is we should not be carried away with what some administrative official they say. The president of the republic, the president of Cameroon, have never said there is no anglophone problem, so that we can say the president have not recognized it. He has never said there is no anglophone problem. And when you look at the solution he has put in place, you definitely know that uh, there is a problem. You remember the time, everybody knows the role he played when he was PM with regard to the dissatisfaction of uh, the Anglophone that he was sent by the former president, Amadou Aijo. So he is aware. Secondly, about the problem not being discussed in the National Assembly, it, it, it is the cumbersome nature of the Assembly that there are various uh, 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 um, commissions. And so this is being discussed at the level of commissions, okay? 
and they have discussed about it many times. But I'm d'accord with those that believe that it should be at the plenary session. But to assure you, it has been discussed at the parliament, but not at the plenary session, but at the commission in charge of that. And uh, secondly, you see, there is no hypocrisy in this. There is no ca uh, Cameroonian from the northwest and southwest region, West Cameroonian or uh, 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 Southern Cameroon, no matter the appellation we want to give. There is nobody that is uh, comfortable. No. All our ministers, they oh. might be in Yaoundé, but they are not comfortable. There is nowhere like home. Parliamentarian, senator, and the rest. Everybody wants peace. And I don't remember any parliamentarian or senator or mayor or councillor who is an elected official that have come out to say there is no uh, 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 problem in the northwest and southwest or anglophone problem or no matter the appellation we want to give. All these elected officials are aware. Where we are stuck now is the fact that we are supposed to bring our apply to our government in a diplomatic way in dialogue and not arms. That's why we are pleading on our brothers that they should drop their arms while we continue the dialogue, while we continue the negotiation as a people. Now, look at, for instance, I am one of those that will tell you that it is a necessity for all English-speaking Cameroonians in the Northwest and in the Southwest to sit and discuss as a people. But can we really do that when our brothers that are killers that are assassins, that are terrorists, are there with guns. If we go today and say, okay, let us sit today in Banso, all Anglophones from the two regions, are we safe? That is the problem. Right. So we are telling our brothers to drop their arms so that we take the part of dialogue to ensure that we have a lasting solution.